Damon Khan here, four seconds out with the entertainer, Johnny Nelson, ahead of an entertaining card this week. And Johnny, I wanted to start with, I know Adam Azim is headlining, but Richard Rackbaugh, cruiserweight, cruiserweight like yourself. A lot of talk about Richard Rackbaugh and opportunities that he maybe not taken. Uh, he's got Dylan Brijan to get through. Will those opportunities come after this fight for him? So Richard's the uh, WBO mandatory challenge uh, challenger officially. So the WBO, I gather after this fight uh, uh, with Masanek and uh, Chris Bill and Smith, Chris wins, they're automatically going to trigger that. So therefore, that's the next fight. Uh, I think if Masanak wins, then Lawrence Nicole is back in the mix again. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like leapfrogging. If, 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 if say, uh, Richard, uh, if Chris wins and then Richard boxes Chris and, Chris, and Richard beats Chris, then, 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 then it's Lawrence Nicole is straight in the mix. So these guys are still, you know, doing a bit of a tango. Uh, that, that possibility is still there, but... Boxing's very strange, so you can't depend on anything. You've got to just wait and see how it turns out. Walked and talked with Richard this morning. He's very confident. Yes, he's frustrated with the waiting and seeing everything that's happening around him. He's, he's in the gym. He's getting on with it. He's very fortunate to be one of those fighters that has other interests away from boxing, but prioritizes boxing no matter what. But uh, so, so he's, in a, he's in a unique position. Unique position indeed as yourself. I apologise first of all, I should have addressed you as Johnny Nelson MBE. <laughs> so I do apologise yeah. and congratulations Thank as well you. for that um, for that accolade. Um, jumping into Adam Mazim, who's trying to get the European title as his accolade this weekend. Look, uh, is he about the complete package for his age, for where he is right yeah, now in his career? Gosh, yeah. I think this will be the acid test in his 10th professional fight, fight for the European title at 21 years old. We've seen Prince Nassim Hamid, we saw what he did, you know, went rose to fame massively. Uh, Spencer Oliver, his career was cut short. He won it in 11 fights, uh, in 11 professional fights. Nasbrook won it in 12 professional fights. Um, if, if, if Adam is a real deal, we'll get this job done. And this will be a distant memory in two or three years' time because we'll be talking about them, him mixing it at a world championship level. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a done deal for him. But what's going to be in his favour is his punch power and his speed. And if he if he like if he lands a shot right, shots right, and he does it right, and he's patient when he needs to be patient, aggressive when he needs to be aggressive, then he gets the job done. Moving on to the wider boxing sphere and the heavyweight division, Fury versus Usyk. Finally, the press conference happened. You weren't too sure if the fight does happen. Uh, the mind game seemed to have started, and Fury's ire was irked by some of the conversations at the press conference. Uh, who's winning the battle of the mind games right now? Do you feel? I think Fury is very good at boxing foreplay and uh, he knows whatever he shouts and abuses to try to abuse Usyk with. It's lost in translation. Usyk probably don't even understand half the stuff he's saying. Uh, so Usyk has to try and impose himself on him physically to try and bully and in 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 intimidate him physically. Uh, uh, and that, that's why the head-to-head -head, the way it was the way it was. Usyk stayed cool, you know. He's, Whatever, deal with whatever. So, so, but so, so, Fury's problem is going to be this. He's thinking, I've got to get in this guy's head. I've got to wind him up. I've got to get him to bite. I've got to feed something up. Sometimes he plays a fool to catch the wise. That's what he did with Klitschko. Klitschko, the rest, and he's done that with opponents before. Sometimes he's made out as though he's not paying attention. It's a no nonsense. Sometimes he's intimidating an opponent being on the fence in front of him. Sometimes he's played best pals with an opponent. So he's just trying to figure out Usyk. What works for him? What works gets under his skin? Skin, it, it doesn't work. So, so right now, I think both fighters are still in exactly the same position they were in the first place. Fury wasn't intimidated. Neither were those who sick. Both guys know what they've got. Want that they've got to do. He played the fool to play the wise. Is an excellent turn of phrase. There's a feeling from Alexander Usyk that his performance against Ngannou was something to trick him. He downplayed himself to. No, no, no. Trust me. That, that was not choreographed, you know, that was Tyson Fury underestimating the man that was in front of him. And, and I've got, got, got a bit of traction me saying Tyson Fury's legs have gone. I'm giving some, some meat on the bones to that. Tyson Fury said he trained hard and did everything right in training camp. So if you wanted us to believe that, that only leaves him with his legs have gone. You know, you can't you can't box that bad after a good hard training camp. You don't box that bad, uh, especially if you're tired to feel at that level. So, so I think he underestimated uh, uh, Ngannou. I think he didn't train as, uh, as he should have done, which is why the performance was the way it was. So, so if people are thinking Tyson Fury engineered it that he boxed that bad. No, he didn't. He just didn't respect the guy that was in front of him enough to give him his his full blooded respect when it came to for the fight. I think. I believe Tyson Fury will box outstandingly when he uh, when he fights um, 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 Alexander Usyk. But if he's telling the truth, 
and he did train to the best of his ability. He trained really hard, did everything right. His legs have gone. So this is the dilemma we're in. You know, and I, I want to put it down to, you know, what he underestimated the man that was in front of him. I think if he boxes Ngannou again, that, that shit don't happen. Uh, so, so, so when it comes to this fight against Usyk, we'll find out if his legs have gone, or we'll find out if he underestimated the man that was in front of him. If Alexon Fury is the case, is he handicapped in that fight with Usyk? Can he still win? Of course win? he is, without a doubt, if his legs have gone. Can he still he win though? No, you can't. Usyk's, Usyk, Usyk's shown he's a, he's a top tier fighter. You know, he does not, you can get away with that with certain fighters. You can't get away with that with Usyk at this stage in his career. Moving on to Anthony Joshua versus Otto Wallen. He was firing that press conference. Jamal Miller put, Miller put it on him. Uh, Deontay Wilder was assured, sending a message, maybe a little bit of veil there. What did you make of Anthony Joshua's persona in that press conference? Well, I think Anthony Joshua was in a room of eagles. And, and to be a, 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 a fighter, a championship fighter, a top tier fighter, you've got to have a bit of an ego. But when you're around people that, that what that will, will will speak their speak and say how it is you know you, you're not you're not used to that so all of a sudden he's thinking hold on a minute you guys are answering me back you guys are talking to me like that you guys not and so anthony joshua i was actually i was more impressed the guy that the cream that rose to the top was deontay wilder mm. i thought he was cool i thought he was classy i thought miller was miller uh, aj um um he's either give that got to give that persona that i'm a bad man now. i ain't having none of that and or the fact that you know what he was in a room with other other fighters that believed they were better than him and 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 are getting that adulation and he didn't like the egos that were there so therefore it put him on edge a little bit uh it's all right to to, to be the be the man when when you know you're the man but when you're in a room of fighters that you think shit, you know these guys i'm, I'm just one off and he's in a room of, and, he, and he's one off so yeah he's a little bit edgy and, and that's what he needs. He needs to have that chip on his shoulder because he needs to, that, that rough edge, AJ, to come back. That's the fighter that he needs to be to think, right, I've got something to prove it. Not that, that, you, that you don't want to go in there and think, I don't need to do anything. This is all a done deal. I'm telling you now, that team of fighters that were there, he'll make sure he does everything right because eventually it might be against Gerald Miller. It might be against Wilde. It might be up against any of those fighters there. But at the, at the moment, he's on a bill where I gather it's, I hear it's a three fight deal that he's got with it, with the Saudis. So these, these, the big fights are gonna happen now because they've put enough gold in the pot to say, right, these fights, sign this deal, sign this contract. So now these guys are in, in the eye, eye of the storm. And now these guys have got to step up if they can actually do it. Does he beat Wallen? Yeah, yeah, he beats him. He beats him. I, I think AJ is, is still a top tier, top five heavyweight in the world. He beats Wallen. If he doesn't, then he needs to walk away. In a room full of egos, as you mentioned, respectfully, the two big egos there, Frank Gore and Eddie Hearn, they finally met together. Apparently, they had a conversation too. Their heads together. Did that, did that sig signify for you a start of a beginning or maybe an end game for no, me? No, these guys wouldn't have been there if they didn't have to be there. You know, they had to be there because the money that's on the table, they, they, would, they would be the ones that were obviously putting a, 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 a block between it, all the fighters working together. Um, Spencer Brown put this show together. He was given a pot of gold by his, his Royal Highness. And so therefore he showed no allegiance to one over the other. He said there was 12 promoters from around the world in the same room. This is what we want because boxing has been shooting itself in the foot for far too long and, and, and the business has taken over the show. So now we're at the stage where now we're at the stage where it, they'd run up a, a, a situation where they say, you know what, you've got no excuse for this not to happen. Otherwise, you're just being uh, obstructive. You know, and you're actually no good for the game. Gonna, these guys would expose themselves, both Eddie and Frank. There's no way you could have given a pot of gold to Frank or Eddie and it would have been an unbiased room there. It, it wouldn't happen in a million years. So, so Jean Hallis did the right thing saying, Spencer, come in. You're in the driving seat. Set it up. The show at the Ungarno show was unbelievable. You know, I made the, the, the future unbelievable. Now again, this is being put on the map. It's an unbelievable opportunity, but this is what it should have been happening for years. But unfortunately, egos, the business side of it, the businessmen, they're the ones that, 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 that kind of mess it up. Finally, Johnny, Miller's presence on that card, does that put you off? And not at all. I actually think he was the loudest one in the room. It made me smile. I thought, well, okay, then Miller's there. Uh, does he get past the finish line? You know, he's Varda testing, unfortunately. You know, uh, like him or loathe him, uh, Jerome Minna, uh, that, that, that cloud's always going to be hanging over him. So, so again, you're thinking, will he, uh, you know, drug testing's going to be had. You know, are these guys going to be stupid enough to make the mistake all over again? I hope not. 
But Miller's there, you know, he's, 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 he's done his time, he's done his band, now it's time for him to fight. Does he beat the war? You know what? I think Miller, even though we've seen him, we've heard him, he's in with a puncher in Dubois, so Dubois can dig. Now we're going to find out a bit more about Miller. See what he's like when he gets hit, when he gets banged. You know, he's, he's, he's shouting out, I, I don't like Wilder, I don't like AJ. Now he's in with somebody that can bang. I know Dubois got his chinks, but Dubois nowhere near uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the other guys. But what I'm saying is Dubois has enough to, to test him. Uh, so we'll just have to see how it falls. I, I think it, it, tell, it will tell us a lot more about Miller, how he deals with uh, Dubois. Tony Nelson, NBA, much appreciated. Thank you.